Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. Hola. New view because our tripod broke. New view. It's all good, though, man. Shout out to all the patrons. All the patrons going to help us get 50,000 new tripods. <laughs> we appreciate the love. If you have not joined the Tamal Intelligence Agency, go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. You get all the shows, man. We dropping shows pretty much every day. Yup. And the last episode of RPT, we went in. Some viral moments, in my opinion, even though I'm shadow banned. I believe that's my excuse because some of this shit should have went viral by now. But this is Chingo Chats. We're going to keep it non-political. I will say that we still can't tag the what did he said page on Instagram. Like you can't at what did he said anywhere. <laughs> like anytime we try putting in a story, here's, the, here's, all right, let me tell you this. I found this out literally just now before you walked in. If you try to tag us on a story, okay, the very first time you put at what did he said, you can click it. And you'll have the line under the, under the name, and that means that it worked. If you delete it, backspace, try to do it a second or third time, beyond that, it will say, cannot at mention, what did he say? It just doesn't find it. It just doesn't do it. It, it grays it out, and it, it's mm. unclickable. Wow. So if you try doing it the first time, it's going to work. If you try doing it again, it's not going to work. <sighs> Basically, you have to self-censor. Uh, the big tech oligarchs, you know, they, they want to control the narrative. But hey, the truth is coming out. <sighs> the truth is coming out. You just can't stop it. It's just impossible. We're still human. We still walk around. We still talk. Y'all haven't become the thought police just yet, so we can still communicate, motherfucker. Uh, uh, this is Chingo <laughs> Chats. We're going to keep the blood pressure low. I'm going to try um, to. I, I can't wait to get more of these Chingo Chat conversations out into the ether because some people think the only thing that goes on in my brain is politics all day long. Not true. So we're going to give y'all another taste of some other stuff we talk about. Yeah, these conversations always end up being really good. Like these are some of the best conversations we have throughout the week, and it's not political, right? We don't even we don't necessarily come up with topics either. Before we just there's so much going on, or that you've already experienced that there's a lot to riff on, right? Yeah. And one of the things we mentioned on the last episode of RPT was it, it started turning into a chingo chat at the yeah, end. Yeah, it sure did. That's uh, weird. Yeah, <laughs> the shows are starting to to mend and, and combine. But uh, Hop Society had mentioned us doing a show. Because we didn't expand on it. We're going to wait till he, to, for this. How do you feel about a show? And this was just one of his ideas, like an idea from a fan, where it was more on the crazy, kooky, conspiratorial, Bigfoot aliens. Like, not even that we're actually going to do it, but do those topics or have they ever interested you? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I always like to apply my filters to things, right? Like, if, whether it's um, Bigfoot. Okay, let's look at some economics. Like, could somebody, I mean, can Target sell a shirt now? With the Bigfoot Monito, if there's some believers. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's just a joke, like the uh, Nard Wall, it's like the well with the unicorn or whatever, like that. You know what I'm talking about? No, what's that? Um, you ever seen Elf, the movie Elf? With Will Ferrell? Yeah. Yes. So in the beginning, when he leaves like the... Uh, Love that movie. When he leaves like the stop motion North Pole. Oh, look, yes, yes, look, yes. And then he leaves and he's like, bye, buddy. Hope you meet your dad. Yeah. That's an art wall. It's oh. like a little dolphin whale looking thing. Okay. It's a mystical character like a unicorn mm -hmm. and stuff like that, like Loch Ness Monster. So I, I would love to uh, explore these things because, number one, I smoke a little bit of weed from time to time. Mm -hmm. I've been known to nibble on a stem of a shroom from time, you know, before. Yeah. Two times. Um, therefore, why wouldn't I want to riff and be entertaining and funny and goofy about some off the wall shit? Because... Some of it ain't that off the wall. Like, I mean, simulation theory. Yeah. Um, I've read a book or two about artificial intelligence and like the singularity, which is coming. Um, I've read, you know, like that dude Ray Kurzweil. He wrote a book called Singularity. <clears throat> and he talks a lot about um, how, you know, artificial intelligence, um, nanotechnology, how they're going to be able to like inject a little like do an IV drip like a nanobot like a little tiny little mm -hmm. robot microchip that can go in float into your artery see what's going on uh make some corrections and you piss it out right <laughs> all like remote control they can see what's happening they can follow it. it has gps or all that so all that shit's fascinating and a lot of that's coming like you ever seen in boston dynamics like them robots oh, yeah. dude humans are gonna have to slowly start merging with the technology in order to compete with it like if you could start having like the new um oh apple makes these new vision wear or like new audio enhancers for people that are going deaf or uh you know um microsoft's working on a thing that makes your memory better like mm -hmm. people are gonna do it like why would you want to be like the only 100 organic old school 
Like, this is, it's, it's, it's ungodly to wear that shit. And yeah. you're just going to be, you had no edge. Dude, that's, that seems lame as fuck. I want to be a super soldier. If I could be Captain America, I want to be Captain America. You know, take the injection. Bionic you know, as fuck. Bi- yes. Like, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a surgery in my legs. You know, they're going to be robotic. It's a dangerous surgery from Grandma's Boy. But, you yeah, know, I think it's yeah. worth it. Bro, have you ever, you, you're younger than me. Are you familiar with the show? Uh, Six Million Dollar Man. I only know that show because it gets made fun of. You know, there's always like Family Guy does a thing or whoever does it's a like, thing. Da, 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 yeah, da, da, but I don't. I don't know what okay. it is at all. Uh, I don't remember every detail, but um, the the backstory is basically. I don't know if this dude was ex military or he was a spy or something. He was like major somebody, but basically they had a chance to save him, operate on him, make him almost like a super soldier in a way. But basically, they put $6 million into this dude, and he just, yeah, that's why he's a $6 million man. <laughs> he's a $6 million man, and he he used to be able to, like, da, 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 like jump over wall, tall walls, like, just do a bunch of shit. And then there was another show called, um, like, All-American Hero. Mm. You ever saw that one? No, wasn't that it a was, toy after a while? It was like, believe it or not, I'm walking on there. Oh, that's I where that's from? I thought I would be so free. Yep. No, that, there's a Seinfeld episode where George uses that song as his uh, voice answering machine. He's like, believe it or not, George is in at home, so leave him. I didn't know that was what it was from. Who could it be? Believe it or not, it's I'm not home. Me. Yeah, it's that's just so, me. What show is this? It's called uh all, like the All American Hero. You should watch the trailer. It's like this. It was like a comedy. It wasn't like a sitcom, but it was a TV show. I believe in the '80s, and um, it was like this curly haired blonde dude, and um, I forget why or how he got sp- special powers, but basically he was kind of like, like a regular dude, like you know what I'm talking about, like That's a regular true. ass dude, yeah. like like a little 40 year old virgin type dude that worked in the cubicle type of guy, and but he had these powers, so he'd have to almost like a funny. Low key Superman, huh? Okay. Yeah, bro. There's like, that's what makes the '80s so fucking cool, uh, culture wise. Not only was America on top, mm-hmm. not only were we a superpower, not only would a pair of Levi's inspire the USSR and the citizens to say, "Wait a minute, what's up with America, man? They capitalists. They got Michael Jackson, they got Ronald Reagan. Their their building is a White House, and they got freedom, and they got you know what I'm saying? Like, it's America. They got culture. They make films over there. It's weird that shows like was Knight Rider a night? That was a '90s show, wasn't it, or an '80s show? I would say '80s. '80s, dude. I love Knight Rider. Like mm-hmm. a car, talking car. Like I'm still that same kid who loves talking cars. Have you seen Airwolf? What the fuck is Airwolf? Knight Rider of the Sky. Really? You might want to watch the trailer. All right, look. Right now, the Taliban got all of our Black Hawk helicopters. Right. This dude, um, uh, in Airwolf, man, it was so cool looking. It was a jet black on black helicopter, bro. That were like. Brrr, like this motherfucker the shots they would get and it was such an awesome helicopter i don't know what kind of like little um um body kit panels um mm. uh, 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 it's like a, it looks like a custom lamborghini style huh. fucking a killer well looking black hawk type of helicopter and this dude is in a cockpit and i don't remember much about the plot of the show but the intro is like phew, when you get a chance just go watch the airwolf tv show um intro then there's this other movie speaking of like black on black stealth lambo looking things there was a movie in the 80s called wraith the wraith have you seen it no the wraith go watch that trailer the wraith w-r-a-i-t-h um i want to say like charlie sheen i want to say there were a couple big names in it but basically a, a teenage it's like a teenage cool like almost like yeah they race cars and shit it's like this small town right but it's, it looks, you could tell it's California. There's a lot of mountainside shots. <clears throat> so one of the kid dies. Something happens, right? All of a sudden, this new kid, I think it was Charlie Sheen, shows up at the high school in the town. It was like, hey, have you seen, get a load of the new guy. He's mysterious. He's on a motorcycle. He's got his little helmet. And he appears almost like a spirit to get revenge for the kid that, that got killed. Mm. Now... Not only does Charlie Sheen pull up mysteriously on a motherfucking motorcycle, but now when the kids are out there racing, the black wraith. It looks like a fucking crazy futuristic Tesla Lambo shows up. So no one knows who's in this car. It's just like, it's a mysterious figure. He's got like all black, 
like a leather jumpsuit type of thing with the helmet so you never really see him and he just fucking like races the 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 i guess they're kids right it's yeah. kind of fucked up but <laughs> they end up like crashing or running off the road getting revenge for the fuck boys that killed the teenager see it sounds like tv was better back then so like it was a simpler time that was what i was going to lead into is it how mm. when was the shift from the what it, were it rafe what was it the yeah the rafe the rafe and Knight Rider and fucking Black Hawk Air, Down. Airwolf. <laughs> Airwolf. Yeah. To like what TV? Ma- Magnum P.I. I, I know the name, but Bay I don't know. You know ooh, Magnum P.I. They brought P. back Magnum P.I., I think, right? Magnum P.I. was dope. They're making bro. it now. I think Bobby Lee's on the show, too. No shit. Yeah, they, they're filming it in Hawaii. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, okay. Weird. Uh, but to go from that kind of stuff to like... like you're talking we, were, we were more American back then. 100%, right? Let, let's just take... You, you brought up the 80s, but if you go back a little bit further... When you see these pictures of like the people that were in like suits and the and the girls look like uh what was the the chick that uh we talking Lucy about? you know he uh-huh. got Lucy like that kind of era like fifties oh, yeah, before okay. like the black and black and white kind of yeah. stuff the TV's black and white but everybody looked like they were like print like real prim and proper I guess it might be the best way there wasn't no thoughts shaking their asses is what I'm saying got it. you know culture we were more respectable yeah yeah more conservative like like even on TV they would show like two different beds. For the, the husband you're right, and the wife. You're right, yeah. yeah. It's a weird time, but still, like, we have made a dramatic shift in the and, other direction. And then one of the most popular people on TV at that time, it was early 80s, was a racist man. All in the Family. I don't remember I that for, either. Okay, so All in the Family was basically a sitcom. I forget the name of the... Uh, what was his name? The lady's name was Edith. Archie. Was it Archie Bunker? Archie Bunker. Archie Bunker. That sounds. I mean, I know I the think, name. I don't know. That that might sound like a comic strip. But anyway, let's roll with it. Anyway, uh, all in the family. The main white dude. He was a comedian mm-hmm. at the time. I don't remember. Him. I was I was a baby. But um, but basically, he would say racist ass shit. The sitcoms when I was a kid coming up, bro. You had the Jeffersons. You had Good Times. Honeymooners. Ah, uh, I ain't that old. God to, the, damn it. to the moon, Alice. Yeah, I didn't really, Just I didn't really, violence. I didn't really get into the honeymooners. Right. That's funny though, to the moon, Alice. So, but but check this out. You had um, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby and his wife on the show played like a doctor and a lawyer. He was Doctor Huxtable. So this was a upper class black family mm-hmm. it just shattered everything that was being portrayed prior right so you had the jeffersons moving on up yeah to the east side they was coming up boom they were portraying that then you had good times it was like hey man we in the ghetto but we still happy mm. you had thelma you know what i mean uh janet jackson played penny she was the young girl who suffered domestic violence her mom burnt her with an uh, uh, iron and Janet Jackson was a little young actress in the show, and it was dramatic. It was like, what happened, Penny? What happened? And she was like all scared, and she has the burn marks, and she's covering her arms, and she don't want to confess, and boom, cut to commercial. <laughs> um, you had Miami Vice. Magnum P.I. was dope because that was one of the shows that when you're in Mexico kicking it with your family out there, for whatever reason on those TV channels, I don't know if they were, I don't know why, but those are the shows that were in programming. Hmm. <laughs> Like those are the ones that got overdubbed, super American shows. Uh, it was like um, it was Baywatch. It was Baywatch. It was like Magnum PI. We're still and, in the eighties here. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe that might have been early nineties, mm. right? When did Baywatch, Baywatch come out? Ninety three. Yeah, I would have said yeah, early nineties, but. So maybe my memory's fucked up, and maybe at first I would go down there as a little kid, and it'd be like cartoons, right? When you're real little, it's like overdubbed cartoons and like. It's like early in the morning, and all the voices of all the cartoons are like, no, nah, 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 nah. have you ever noticed that shit? No. Cartoons in Mexico? It's fu- how they overdub? I guess not. No. Dude, it's it's comical. It, it it's it's like um, like just say you're in Mexico and you wake up in the morning and your cousins are bumping Spanish cartoon cartoons in Mexico. Yeah. And uh, you're at the rancho or something, and it's just like. It's almost like shit's more kitty or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, It's yeah, like yeah, they yeah. cater to kids more or just the way the voices are done. They just have one pitch. Yes. But um, It's like a high-pitched monotone. Yeah, it's, like, it's weird. But anyway, so you had like Knight Rider, Magnum P.I., you know what I'm saying? Alpha. Hey, puro, vato, yeah. puro Vato Alpha, way. This boy had a big old mustache. He was in um, Magnum P.I. What was he in? A Trans Am? Am I tripping? Yeah. Uh, Knight Rider? Because he also. Firebird or Trans Am? No, no. Knight Rider was oh. a Trans Am. Yeah, yeah. But Magnum P.I. was in a Firebird. Was it? 
I think so. Magnum PI. I thought that was a, 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 like a Lambo. Or, I thought Magnum PI. Nah, Magnum man. He was, he was all okay. I'm getting confused with smoking the bandit. Yeah, you are. What did Magnum PI? A Corvette? Nah, dude. I think it was a Countach or a Ferrari. He was coming down drop top for sure. Uh, Ferrari 308 GTS. So Magnum PI had a Ferrari. Yeah. Okay, bet. Okay. So smoking he, the bandit. You're totally mixing up the. Yeah, smoking the bandit was like a Firebird. Yes, that was, yeah, okay. that quintessential, he had the bird, the screaming bird on the car. And then Night Rider was like a Trans Am. Also was, sort. yeah, I believe it was a Firebird or a Trans Am, same, same car, same car. Okay. But Baywatch, by the way, 1989 to 2001, it wow. ran 11 seasons. Oh, yeah, man, you got, you got these girls in bikinis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't really know much about the plot, but shit, Pamela Anderson was a star. Dude, um, Jason Manuel was, was even in it in the later years. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, what's his name? Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff yeah. Uh, the Dave, Hoff. What's his name? David? David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff was like the lead. Now I think they remade it with The Rock or some shit. Lame. They made a movie with him and uh, the other guy. With the white, pretty looking guy. Fuck, what's his name? He was in Neighbors. Zach Efron. Who, who and who? The Rock? And The Rock, yeah. Oh, that was their version of Baywatch? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, you know, that's what Hollywood does, man. <laughs> uh, I'm not mad at The Rock. He's smart. Because he knows he's he's built up his brand and his um everything about his name yeah. to where he already knows if they ever even if they didn't think of bringing back Baywatch, him and his team were already coming in with the branding like, hey man, it's either me or Mark Wahlberg type of thing. You know, would I mean? much rather see Mark Wahlberg. And he's probably like, I'm the one that brought the idea, and y'all need to make it more ethnic anyway, or y'all want to keep it white. Y'all want to be racist. The fr- David Hasselhoff, German. Now y'all want to bring the raw Irish boy? Get with the Hawaiian, pl- pimping. Get with the half black, half Hawaiian. What was he, Samoan? Was he half Samoan? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, you got to be more culturally uh, inclusive. I mean, Joe, you're, you're bringing mana to the White House, Joe. I, I love that you're going to bring mana to the White House. and He was saying all that? Yeah, he interviewed him. What is mana? I don't know, but it sounds like some lovey-dovey, like, bring us all together shit. Man, for RPT, bro, we need to make a compilation of just celebrities sucking off Biden. Like, orale, you already know. You already know who, Despacito, Eva Longoria, Loisima, we did, oh my God. If it wasn't, for, anyway, that's RPT talk. You're right, you're right. That's RPT talk. But um, when we were in Denver, Javi Luna and I, we went down the same type of convo about, I, I was showing him Airwolf. He didn't know about Airwolf. Javi? Yeah, he didn't know about Airwolf. He's not your age? Isn't he like- He's a couple years younger, but he, for what... Some of this shit might just fall through the cracks. He was showing me a movie that I wasn't too familiar with. Sidekicks. Mm. That? It was like a bootleg ass karate kid. Sidekicks? Yes. It was so bootleg, bro. I've seen side chicks. I started thinking the shrooms actually kicked in. Um, and I didn't want to offend him because like, I was a little high. <laughs> I was a little high and I was just like, oh my God, what the fuck kind of acting is this? Like, I, and he was just sitting there quiet. Like, he wasn't laughing when I'm roasting the movie. I'm like, oh, wait, he really <laughs> likes this shit. <laughs> Dude, Chuck Norris is in it. It was terrible. I, you know the jokes about, like, Chuck Norris don't do push-ups. He pushes down the earth. Yeah. I think they came from this movie. Oh, that's because, awesome. Because the lead kid, he keeps having these vignettes where he's going into, like, dreamland. Like, he has a vivid imagination. So him and Chuck Norris are always having to do crazy shit. And there's a comedian <sighs> named uh, Joe Piscopo. He was in it. Very strange. It threw me off. I went to bed. Like, I just got, I was like, all right. I, just, I was like, I got cold. So I went to the room <laughs> part with the, where the beds are. And then Javi's like, um, are you, it's, it's only like 15 more minutes. Are you not going to, you, you're not going to finish it? And I'm like, mm, no, I'm good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in bed scrolling Instagram. Like, uh, dude, Mattress Max in it. They shot it in <laughs> Houston, bro. <laughs> they did? Yes. If you read more into it. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, some of the producers or Mattress Mag was a producer. Like, they shot it, I think, at Lamar High School. What? I'm, I mean, I'm looking. I'm just, looking. I can, I can only look up. Just some for the sake, just for the sake of seeing them practice karate in downtown Houston. Yeah. And you trying to guess which park that is and stuff like that. Just for the sake of that, Poppy wanted them Delta Eight chocolate shell shock CBD. Yes. And maybe watch a, a little chunk of that movie just to be like, hey. You know, tell your wife, like, hey, I'm, this is going to be funny, and I'll cut it off. Don't worry. Sidekicks was filled primarily in Houston, Texas. It was the pet project of well-known Houston furniture outlet owner, Jim. It was fucking Mattress Max movie. There you go. Holy shit, that's funny. 
in partnership with Chuck Norris and his Kick Drugs Out of Schools campaign, he invested $8 million in producing this movie. Uh, Mattress Mag did? Yes. I wonder if he made it all back. I mean, holy. He, he, probably, did, he probably did make it back, back. But at that time, $8 million in 1990 and 1992? He might have made it back because, I mean, now, especially by now. Dude, adjusted for inflation, what is that? Fucking $16 million, double that, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. That's but, crazy. But I, while we were watching, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, okay, the shrooms definitely kicked in. There's Dude. something about the cover. I kind of dig it. It's got the yin yang like symbol, like, you know. Yeah, even just for the sake of fucking getting a laugh. Like, I was like, oh my God, this acting hobby. It was campy. Dude, that's funny. It was campy as fuck. And uh, Joe Piscopo, he was a big star probably around that time. They had him in there. So, yeah. The audience. Uh, I love this. It's like five stars, five stars, five stars. I love this movie, even though it was not born in the 90s, 80s. I love this movie. John Brandis and Chuck Norris. I love them both. The movie was so good. Very enjoyable for all ages. Huh. What's the lead? The kid? Is that John? Yeah. So, he... I think he ended up killing himself, bro, later. Oof. I, if you want to pull up his IMDb, mm-hmm. he's done. Uh, he's been in a bunch of shit. You got to play that game where it's like is or was. Have you ever heard of that game on Wikipedia? So you wiki somebody's name and it'll tell you is or was. So it lets you know if they're dead or alive. So it says uh, Jonathan Gregory Brandis was an American actor beginning his career as a child model. So yeah, I guess he did. Uh, Which movies was he in? Uh, he was in Ladybugs. See, there you go. I don't know that movie. Isn't that a Disney thing with about the um, the Volkswagen? Yep. Yep. Uh, Sequest, uh, Sidekicks, forty five other things. Jesus, those are he was in it. That's a bunch of big projects. He bro. was in Hearts War with Bruce Willis, and wow, and and that's just that shows. I don't know if he was depressed or mental health issues or what, but um, good looking kid. But look, you could be in some of the biggest films. This kid was in everything from Ladybug, Sidekick, so on and so forth. And some some people be at home depressed, like, man, my dreams didn't come true. I, I haven't done 45 movies and this and that. You sitting there getting down on yourself. The kid who did 45 movies. He dated Tatiana Ali when she was at the height of the Fresh Prince. Wow. Look at that. And he still killed himself, bro. Fuck. He was, he had at the time reportedly $400,000 net worth. He was a screenwriter, director, actor, producer until he died in 2003. How did he? 400000 net worth? Yeah, that's what it said. That's kind of, seems yeah. very underrated. Yeah, he thought he'd invested some of that sidekick money. <laughs> <laughs> you could have flipped that. Uh, but yeah, enter, uh, insert suicide hotline number. Oh, at the time of his death, he only had a net worth of 400000 Maybe that's why. Oh, it's fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up man either way either way y'all look suicide hotline call it man i still can't find everything out. is I'm perspective you gotta be grateful yeah. everything is perspective any hoozle it looks like you would need some uh some cbd8 gummy or cbd9 whatever the real deal to watch this movie because it does look pretty it's pretty, pretty campy dated. it's pretty campy like i i that's the, that should be the challenge for rob at some point, just try to watch some of those trailers. Get a kick out of Airwolf. Um, it, it's just so interesting how, like, I guess a piece of art or a show like that, how different people could perceive it. Because the first time I saw it, it's going to make an impression because I'm a kid. Mm-hmm. And it's a different era. It's a different time. You're going to watch it as an adult in the year 2021. So it's just going to be like, yeah, I have some some reference of that time period because i watched other things but i've never seen this and do you remember your earliest memory as a kid we're talking about a lot of stuff that went down in the 80s but you were born in what 84 79 oh shit really in 79 wow why did i think 84 turn of the century maybe that That was mighty soul no she's 81 no she's not she's 81 wow okay Mm -hmm. i'm way off yeah um okay what's your do you have an earliest memory of the 80s I have some. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of them. Like, <clears throat> like claw back to your earliest 1980s memory. Okay. It would probably have to be me as a little bitty kid. Oh, uh, here go a couple memories. Me as a itty bitty little kid who would just like ride on his bike and play with other kids in the neighborhood, right? Um, I had older sisters. So I remember 
like uh, her Pat Pat had a boombox, so I'd borrow it all the time. I listened to like like we talking put over your shoulder boombox. Um, it was like a uh, like a stereo you'd call it, right? It's not like a. I mean, you could put it over you. It's basically like a cassette deck in the middle, mm. uh, FM dial. You got a record function with a little built-in mic. You got two speakers, two little tweeters, and maybe a handle, right? So, so I say that to say this. If she has a Beastie Boys cassette mm-hmm. or El Cool J, anything like that, or even like Columbia House, like if anybody got like a movie soundtrack in the mail, I might get a hold of it. So I'm getting exposed to like Eddie Murphy at the time, his stand-up, uh, Beastie Boys, like Def Jam Records. Maybe my little friend down the street, he might have access to some other music. You know what I mean? Like uh, Public Enemy and, uh, you know, Flavor Flav, Chuck D, KRS One, Digital, um, uh, did, what is it? Fuck. B, uh, Boogie Down Productions. Mm. That's uh, Karis One's crew. So anyway, so you're hearing all this hip hop stuff. You're seeing people break dancing in the street on like cardboard and like, like my sister's older friends. That's what teenagers would do. Yeah. They'd get some linoleum and shit and they're out there, you know, don't stop planet rock. And you're just like, what the fuck is this? Um, those are, I'd have to say like getting a hold of my sister's boom box and recording stuff. Whether recording stuff off the radio, like your favorite mixes or something, or even just recording your voice, like trying to tell a spooky story, like playing around on the mic, like, there was a house on the hill with an old lady, and then you creak the door, like in your room, yeah. to add the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that. You had E.T. I remember they took me to go see E.T. Never saw E.T. Yeah, they took me to the theater. I was probably too little to be seeing that shit. Um, Honestly, I don't even know the gist of the fucking movie at all. You haven't seen anything ET related. I mean, I've seen like the character and uh, like the jumping like on the bicycle, or he's like his fingers out or some shit. Okay, that's it. Wow, that's all. I don't know anything about it. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm you, only ten years older than you. You said seventy nine. I was born in eighty nine. Okay, yeah, you missed out on a whole bunch. What about Jaws? You familiar with Jaws? I'm familiar with it, but I never saw it. Okay, yeah, I could see that. That was a little bit. That was early nineties, wasn't it? No, I, think I, I want to say that was the 80s. 80s. The first job. I feel like the 80s had a lot of cultural shifts. Like, there was a lot that went on. And, like, we're talking, like, heavy metal hair bands, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll was at an all-time high. Like, the Motley Crue and, you know, that kind of era. And then movies and, and TV, you just, you can't make almost anything that would have been at the, at, like, a, at a height in the 80s. I feel like you couldn't replicate that stuff in the in the now. Or, days. like, hip-hop, too. Yeah, like especially hit, hitting, the, hitting the scene. Yeah. It, I don't know. Before it turned into <clears> trap, <throat> mumble rap, uh... People, uh, rappers bragging about Big Pharma. Like when you were 10 and I was 10, the world was a completely different space. But when my sister was 10 and I was 10, it's not that big of a difference, you know? Because it, it, we're five years apart. But let's just say, you know, a, tw- a 2000, 2010 is like, okay, so there's some big differences there. Iraq, all this kind of stuff. But like 2010 to 2020. Oh, yeah, yeah, you had the recession, yeah, Obama. Yeah, the housing, all that stuff. But 2010 to 2020, I mean, with the exception of what just happened over the last year, there, there wasn't like a big cultural shift. I mean, you can get down to nitty gritty of like political shit always, right? Occupy Wall Street, you know, Obama, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but culturally, yeah. movies, music, that yeah, kind I know, of thing. I, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, arguably, arguably you're right. The 80s looks, it sounded like a fucking great time. Yeah, too bad I was so young. Too bad I was so young. Like, had you been born in like 69, like 70, and it, then you would have been a teenager in the 80s? That would have been... Or college in the 80s? Mm, I probably would have been a teenager in the 80s. Okay. Because if I'm born 79, and, and well, yeah, because look at my sister Pat. She was born 69. Right. That's, yeah, yeah, that's a better that's example. That's a 10-year difference. So, yeah, she was, she was in high school. Yeah. They're doing the big hair. Like, there's something about Days and Confused. When I saw Days and Confused, it's one of my favorite movies. Uh-huh. That I did see. I felt like that is the shit I should have been born into. Yeah. And I guess I kind of was growing yeah. up in a small town. Interesting. But <clears throat> when you when you look when you zoom out, especially when we talk about culture war and we talk about like on RPT, we talk a lot about like um, how certain ideology, pen, you know, per, whatever permeates, permeates, penetrates certain uh, industries or uh, institutions, right? So I think back and think to myself, okay, why were the '80s so lit culturally? Meaning. Could Michael Jackson and Prince and Ronald Reagan and and all the you know Mary Lou Retton and you know the even the Olympics were more lit? Yeah. Shit. True. I forget which Olympics it was, but it's several times. Right? I think it was um 
what's his name like jesse owens or some shit uh black track star or he was up there next to real deal nazis saluting the flag a black man mm. in oh, the Olympics. Yeah. I've seen that picture. A before. black man in the Olympics representing America, standing proud as an American. Next to like for real, like Hitler's in the crowd. For real deal, Nazis. The German team right here. They might have got second place or some shit. But anyway, um, I digress. You want to hear a couple interesting facts about the cost of living in 1979 when you were born? All right. So the average cost of a new house was fifty eight thousand dollars. The average income per year was $17,500. The average monthly rent across the country was $280. The cost of a gallon of gas was 86 cents. Below are some of the prices of the UK guides. Pound. Okay, so yeah. Um, Different time. A Sony Walkman was $200. Oh, shit. I don't remember it being that much. Wow. Uh, a chess challenger computer chess game was $200. Uh, girls' denim, over, denim overalls were $24. Bucks. Atari video games were $200. A VHS, a regular fucking VHS recorder was $60. Yeah, that's funny because, like, those are the type of purchases that um <laughs> your family's making at that time. Like, the VCR. Yeah. We got to go get a VCR. <laughs> we got to go down to service merchandise and get a VCR. Uh, two of the most popular cars around that time was the Toyota Corolla, which brand new was $3,600. And a Mercury Cougar, which I remember that. That was 64 Wow, that's crazy. I would have imagined the Toyota Corolla would have been the price of a Mercury Cougar. $6,400. Let's see. Um, Dude, Michael Jackson releases Breakthrough uh, album Off the Wall, August 10, 1979. Oh, 79. Okay, Off the Wall came out 79. Um, Dude, history's so fascinating. You know, you forget so much shit as, as time goes on, obviously. But it... I'm I'm still trying to pinpoint a little bit of the ether and the uh what's the word I'm looking for, man? Like the um the zeitgeist. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like in other words. Of the eighties? Yeah, everything in general as to like why was it such a special time? Why was there a shift? I might have to go out and watch one of them eighties documentaries they yeah. got on, like on Netflix, like Time Life. This was the eighties. Right. Cause I'm sure Reagan will come up, war. Well, think about it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect segue. It's almost as if we had more nationalism, we were more unified, we had a clear enemy in communism. You know what I'm talking about? You had the Cold War, you're thinking about the USSR. There was also, I mean, Mexico and the United States had a really interesting uh, relationship at that time. I'm going to look that up real quick, but keep going. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to walk through this, where it's like, every, it, you, think about it, you had Rocky versus Drago. Was, it, was that the 80s or the 90s? That had to have been 80s. Okay. Either way, there was an overall sentiment. You had the Cold War. Like, that happened. Where Ronald Reagan said, we win, they lose. We would not let the USSR and communism fucking win and beat us and be in superpower. 1985. Rocky IV. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Rocky what came out in 85? Four. Damn. Rocky IV came out in 85. Wow. Okay. All right. So. Dude, Captain Ivan Drago looks just like the Street Fighter character. That guy Drago, was a fucking yeah, specimen. Yeah, Drago. He looks like who? Guy? Yeah. Or Zangief for a little bit? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, all right. So, check this out. I'm trying to, like, try to pinpoint this shit. <laughs> People are listening, like, hurry up. <laughs> Damn, say what you're trying to say. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Okay. Times were different for a variety of reasons. You know, could a Michael Jackson, like if Michael Jackson just came out right now, 2021, he obviously would have to come out in a different way, right? He'd still be a musician. He'd still be more of like, okay, he'd be kind of like, okay, I don't know, okay, am I allowed to be this pale? <laughs> am I allowed to be this sensitive? You know what I'm saying? Will I dance like this or do I have to dance more like a TikToker, right? Gross. Do I dress Gross. like this? Think about it. Do I dress like this? I want to wear this sparkly glove. Or do I have to dress more like saggy designer, like Hermes belt and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like dress like soldier boy. You see what I'm saying? Who's today's, this is totally on subject, off subject. Who's today's Michael Jackson since you brought him up? Yeah, it depends on how you want to like enumerate that or measure that. Um, let's see. If you base it off of um, Michael Jackson's a fucking icon. So it'd be like, who's today's icon? Okay, yeah. Bieber? Yeah, frame it like that. Mid-80s versus whatever we are in now. 
Yeah, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like how would you like late 2020s or early 2020s? Well, it's like who's a phenomenon like that? Like who who's a phenomenon but has staying power? It, it obviously it isn't uh, Om Nam Gam Nam style. Hey. <laughs> it'd dare. be like that was huge. It made a splash, but it didn't stay. Um, the weekend, no, no, because Michael Jackson way bigger than the weekend. Um, it you know Drake, no, that's still too hip hop. Bieber maybe it's like who's a teenage pop icon they got people just ah, like pandemonium like international global pop star ariana grande is bieber bigger than ariana grande i don't think so anymore really i mean he's just like he, he got super religious and then just got into his own little recluse world i don't feel like he's making as much noise that sounds like michael yeah you're right actually <laughs> <laughs> he also be sleeping in that hyperbaric chamber like Michael. That's actually a good point. He's a troubled spirit. He's he's a missing. What is it? A misinterpreted. What is it? Mis he's misanthropic. No, no, no. Like like they confuse. They not misinterpreted. Yeah, he's just like a misinterpreted global icon, pop star. Um, can dance, can sing. Uh, it's, old, it's hard, man. Remember the old video where he had a car, I think, break down in the hood. And they're all like the, the like a bunch of people notice it's Justin Bieber and they're like, oh, it's Justin Bieber. And then like they get, he's like they huddle around his car and he's just like trying to, you know, he plays it cool. And he's like, hey, you know, what's going on? And he's like, hey, man, you sing real good. You, can you sing something? And he starts singing. And he's like, sing, white boy, sing. And he's just like, sing. and then he starts doing push ups with them in the street and stuff. What the fuck? You don't remember this video? Man, pull this up, bro. I gotta, all right. Let me look at it. Pull up. this shit up. I have never, ever heard of that. Bieber doing push ups in the hood. <laughs> What the? He didn't have no security by himself? Dude, I don't know what happened. Oh my. Crips make Bieber do push ups. <laughs> you don't remember this? Oh my. Justin Bieber in the hood in LA playing with kids doing push ups. Justin Bieber's car breaks down in the hood. They make him do push ups. Is there a video that you can that you There's just play? There's a lot. On it. Justin Bieber's car broke down in the hood. Locals made him do push ups. Pull up to Compton and Watts with hood Crips full footage. Uh yeah, let's see. Let's just fucking pull something up. He look like Ellen DeGeneres in one of these. <laughs> he does. I've got. I've seen a lot of those memes. <clears throat> All right, we got to get through this ad, everybody, and then we'll get back to our '80s and '90s conversation. I just thought Chingo had to see this because it's pretty funny. Very interesting. Bieber getting punked in the hood, forced to do push up. I am hardwired, but it is buffering like it's 1989. Worst case, got played off the phone. I can't wait to see this shit. Here we go. Man, it starts from him doing push ups, but it was a lead up to this. Let's see if it. Maybe that's it up. the hook. Six, seven, eight, 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 Right here, man. Justin Bieber in the hood. Bieber, give me your phone number, player. Boy, sing that shit. And then give me your phone. Sing that shit, Bieber. Justin Bieber in the hood. He in the trenches with the kid. Kimo. Just Justin Bieber. What you say? I'm dumb watching this nigga grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of you, the rock star. Making it hard. Okay, he got security out there with him. Eliza Monster. Cause you're too bad for me. Shot that arrow, I'm hit. I need you right near me. I try to maintain. So don't mind if I turn away. That's when your talent say your life. For real. Okay. Okay, white boy. Look at Bing, Bing, Big Al. He's bigger than that. He's still hanging with them? <laughs> I was like, where the fuck's my car? Wait, is he still with them? Is that he, him? He about to cross over this little boy, bro. But no shirt and everything. Oh. He's like, nope. Oh, Bieber, oh. Bieber out there. Come on now, Bieber. Oh. He out there crossing boys up in Watts. <laughs> you see him, though? Let me find out. Bieber is really the professor from uh, <laughs> all, what is it? <laughs> and one. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and then, he, and then he told the black girl, once you have vanilla, you never go back. 
Dude. <laughs> Funny shit, huh? <laughs> and then they See, get him to do push-ups again. Who else? Think about it, man. Who else just shut down some shit like that? Like when Michael Jackson would be out there shopping. When Michael Jackson ran up. He, Michael Jackson would be the first one to do some weird shit. He was the first one walking around with these face draws, these masks. You're right. Okay. He had buku money. Now, it got a little crazy when he started have, hanging with kids too much. However... He did have this Never Never Land, right? Mm-hmm. That motherfucker had roller coasters and shit, talking about he's Peter Pan. They both grew up as child musicians. Desde chiquitos, man. They had them. Taz, taz, andale, practica. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. They, I said what I said. Bieber might have to be today's modern day white boy version of Michael Jackson. I'm not mad at that. Canadian version. <clears throat> he's, got some, he's got some bangers. I mean, that's my argument. You got to find somebody that's pop, global, you know. As many similarities as you can. I said what I said. What a time, man. The 1980s. Never be forgotten. You said you were born, what, 89? Yeah. Okay. The tail end. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't even count. Yeah, just like I'm not from the 70s. I'm just tail end. Yeah, exactly. But then you get into the 90s, right? And you start having things like, uh, obviously, Reagan, you know, then Bush Sr. You got uh, O.J. Simpson, you know, stuff like that starts happening culturally. Like, there's a lot of... A lot of big shifts in the culture. Like in the mid-90s, uh, let's see. Hip-hop was big as fuck, too, in, in, the, the, in 90s, the 90s. Early 90s, in the 90s early, period. Early mid-90s, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Like, that's when Biggie, Tupac, like, that was like high school years. You know what the number one song was in 1995? Uh-oh. Creep by TLC. Creep. Yeah. Keep it on down low. I don't know. Marisol used to have her hair like T Boz, the lead singer of. Uh, really? She she was basically little Mexican T Boz. Dude, the, that was when the Rockets beat the Magic four zero. The Dream Team, the Rockets Dream swept Team swept them. You mean? Yep, yep, swept them. Um, speaking of OJ, the OJ debacle hit TV when he was in a white Bronco mm-hmm. during a Rockets game finals. Really? Yes. Oh, uh, I never knew that. Yes, um, Rockets were playing. I can't even remember who. We we're at my sister's house. My sister Pat, um, everybody was over there watching the Rockets about to win. We about to win the title. All of a sudden, breaking news, uh, ex-NFL star O.J. Simpson, uh, he's kind of wanted. He's on the freeway. They're doing a police chase. We're like, bitch, go back to the game. <laughs> this is the fucking guy. Like, he don't even play football no more. We're like, what is this about? We're like, this is a dude that does used car sales. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, what was it? Car insurance mm-hmm. commercials. Is that what he was doing? It was Hertz, a uh, car rental. Mm. I think it was like Hertz. That's all he was known for at the time. He <laughs> hadn't played football in years. And he did a couple, he was in a, a couple movie cameos. And um, everybody just knew the juice used to play football. And he did a Hertz commercial. And then they stopped the fucking Rockets NBA finals to show him on a freeway in a white Bronco. That's they crazy. cut away from the finals, bro. That's crazy. I bet they wouldn't have did that shit if it was the Lakers or the Knicks. You know, the uh, the coastal elites. Yeah. The powers that be, they would have said, man, look, when the Lakers are done playing, then we'll cut to yeah. motherfucking the freeway and shit. We'll see if they caught him or not, if he turned himself in or what. Yeah, when the Celtics are done, then we'll cut over. Well, you know, New York. New York is a big media. Yep. A lot of shots get caught out there. And Texas, they consider us flyover, this and that. So I already know. They're probably like, man, fuck the Rockets. And they cut away. It was funny. One of the major events of uh, 95 also was the Mexican bailout. Do you remember r- remember reading about this at all? No, Mexican bailout. Yeah, so President Clinton invoked emergency powers and granted a $20 billion loan to bail out Mexico. Uh, the loan was controversial, but Mexico reaped the loan er, uh, repaid sorry, the loan early, and the loan averted a major financial crisis for Mexico. That's fascinating. Isn't it? When did NAFTA come in? After that? Way after that, I want to say. Hmm. Hmm. What year was that bailout? 95. Maybe find out when NAFTA is. Because, uh, uh... Might be related. El Paso, we coming. September 9th through the 11th. We got Brea, California after that. Oxnard after that. Denver was lit. I'm still recovering. Oh, no, I'm tripping. It was signed on 1994. January 1st, 1994. So NAFTA happened first. Bailout happened second. Mm-hmm. Very telling. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. 
all that stuff gets lost in the mix, man. You forget about these little details. Yeah, I think Trump was against NAFTA, right? Because he started this uh, Canada. He renamed, he fixed it all up or some shit. The North American Free Trade Agreement established a free trade zone in North America. It was signed in 1992 by Canada, Mexico, and the United States and took effect January 1st, 1994. Immediately lifted tariffs on majority of goods produced by uh, Singatory nations. Yeah, I need, I'm not a, an expert on NAFTA, but from what I re- recall, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's something to where like we it wasn't the best deal for us like it was like un, uneven like it's almost like we had to pay tariffs taking shit to mexico yeah it reduced or eliminated tariffs on imports and exports between the three participating countries creating a oh. huge free trade zone interesting yeah i don't know hmm. i could yeah i'm not i'm not an expert on that but um some people would argue it probably was bad this probably had to do with wages in the countries um one of those things one of those things that's we should probably read more about. Employers could threaten relocation uh, to force workers to accept wage cuts and more dangerous working conditions. Uh, NAFTA would destroy farms in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Agri- agribusiness would uh, use lower prices for the intentional international holdings uh, to undersell family farms. NAFTA would undermine wages of, and workspace safety. Interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> Something to think about. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, we kind of started the podcast talking about doing other shows or segments like this where it's more free flowing. We talk about shit like this because we could take some of the stuff and just riff about it for for a while. Right. And some of the things that I remember reading in my mid 20s when I was starting my my like my bigger business was a lot of marketing stuff. And marketing history actually has a lot of interesting shit. Right. Mm -hmm. So from uh, the ones I remember and that I kind of briefly pulled up was like toothpaste, breakfast, like toothpaste. Where the fuck is it? It's all market. It was all marketing ploys, right? So there was a like Colgate, I believe, was the first toothpaste brand, but it was a marketing like guru. Let's see. The history of toothpaste marketing is actually pretty remarkable. In the early 1900s, few Americans were brushing their teeth. Uh, that yeah, it quotes. Yeah, I can feel the cringe. That changed when a man named Cloud Hopkins began marketing a revolutionary toothpaste that tasted minty and tingled in your mouth. It was called uh, Pepsodent, and the brand he created. Uh, endured for decades it's a success story worth studying i think that that was a brand in the 80s still wasn't it pepsi it's around today is it yeah no oh. uh hopkins is one of the great marketers of the of history of mark one of the great marketers in the history of marketing he developed a two-step formula that we still use today find a cue find a cue and find the rewards so anyway the, the story to get the nits and to, to get to the fucking like meat and potato of it i gotta reread it but it was all it's all just about Again, going back to what you always say, uh, persuasion and um, like comparing and contrasting and the persuasion mm-hmm. is what a lot of these products that have like s- like been sewn into our cultural you know, like mm-hmm. norms and regimens oh, yeah. are all just people, they, they posed it in a certain way yeah. that convinced you. Who, 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 speaking of toothpaste and persuasion, four out of five dentists agree. Yeah. Or the American Dental Association. Well, yes. That's called social proof. Yes. And that's how, that's how eggs and bacon became a thing. That one off the top of my head was like, it was another marketer who was actually like uh, the nephew of, I think like Sigmund Freud. He was, he was, he was given a challenge of increasing sales for either the egg company or the meat company. And he accepted the challenge and somehow reached out to, I think like 5,000 doctors and had them convince them that at the time, Americans were only eating like a, a glass of OJ and a, like a, a roll, like a really light breakfast, you know, nothing special, also super carby and sugary, but it wasn't anything big. He then convinced these doctors that having a bigger breakfast in the morning was better. You'd have more energy throughout the day, blah, blah, blah. 4,500 or 5,000 of these 5,000 doctors came back and agreed and said, yeah, larger breakfast does make more sense. And then they started using that 4,500 or like, you know, 85%, 90% of doctors agreed with a larger breakfast. And then the food pyramid, the eggs and bacon thing comes in really interesting stuff. And we still use it to this day. Even though uh, I'd argue that like, it just depends on who you are and what you're trying to do. But for, for a lot of folks, eggs and bacon makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? For higher protein, higher fat. Um, it doesn't have to be the only type of breakfast, Yeah, but, but it's interesting how marketing plays a role, industries play a role, especially, uh, associations and agencies like, you know, like, what is it? The, um, like FDA, mm-hmm. Food and Drug Administration or, or the American Dental Association, like these little, 
associations and administrations, governmental bodies, where they could just make a food pyramid. Next thing you know, everybody's obese and we don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's not true. necessarily because of food pyramid, but it's like, for the most part, the way people eating is damn near consistent with the food pyramid. Yeah, they published articles saying that 4,500 physicians urge heavy breakfast in order to improve the health of American people. Some of the articles published mentioned bacon and eggs as an example of a heavy breakfast. The campaign was successful and beech nut bacon sales increased. Spurred on by the seemingly legitimate research, the American public began regularly eating bacon and eggs for breakfast. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Like in Italy, man, they they just have a little bit of coffee and a pastry. That's it. To them, they, they don't know scrambled eggs are over there, bro. Really? Nuh-uh. They don't. I take that shit for granted. Like when we were in Italy for, a, I don't know, I forget how long we were out there, about 10 days or something. And whether we'd be in Rome... No matter where the fuck we would be, Naples, somewhere, Venice, it'd be like, man, I just want some bacon and eggs. And you'd literally have to find like a specific little cafe where there's tourists, like a, a marketplace down to like a Rome, like a more of a central type of place. And it'd be like American breakfast sold here, like a banner. Where it's like, fuck, let's go get some fucking meat. Because we couldn't even find protein, bro. Like you're eating at restaurants and it's just like pastas, pizzas, breads, more bread, more carbs, more pastas. That's what they do with their eggs. If you show them scrambled eggs, they're like, "What? What are you doing? What is? What is that? Mm. You 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 uh, you're gonna eat that? Really? That's how um the the family um the Marisol's friend, the couple out there, they lived in the like countryside, smaller town, outside of Naples, and firsthand like the neighbor would come over. I guess she was curious about Americans and shit, and we'd hear them speak Italian, and you're trying to like got like a little translator hey what did she say anyway straight up she's just like we don't we don't need eggs like that we don't even know that's just like what is that why are you doing that they they're like we use eggs to make to bake stuff make pastas and things like that uh and then you'd go to restaurants and you're like okay where the fuck can i get like some grilled chicken breast steak where's the meat nothing nothing you're just like oh my fucking god where what page where you'd have to like get really really lucky and just be at the right restaurant where they probably just know there's tourists or something or people that, or they just happen to offer it. But nine times out of 10, it's just like really good pizza, you know, really good pastries, really good pasta. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't do it. I love pastas and cars, but I got to have. You get, you seriously get to all of us. Yeah. Uh, Mickey, she, I forget how old she was at the time, maybe like nine or something, if that uh probably younger than that she i can't remember maybe she was eight but she's just like oh my god like we just i just want some chicken like is there a chicken strip anything i'm like i'm sorry mika i wasn't ready even I mean, if even if it's pasta man like some chicken alfredo you know put some chicken in that put, oh. some, put some shrimp put something yeah crab something the only time we had seafood like we specifically were in like a seafood beach type area district where it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, no, we got you. Yeah, we, we just caught some fresh stuff and put in some nice sauce, lemon, whoop de woo pasta on the side, this and that. Besides that, <laughs> it was a fool's errand. Dude, fuck that. But anyway, uh, very fascinating, man, marketing and how shit, how you can make shit pop. Yeah, maybe um, <clears throat> maybe this turns into its its other, you know, its own show. We'll think of something. I just jotted down some notes, maybe like forgotten history you know with jinko playing or something man like it that. sounds like the way a hop society pitched it to us was almost like on some conspiracy type shit he wanted to do conspiracy so i mean i'm not against that either I yeah mean, i think stuff like that um makes cool content you know you know how rogan eddie bravo sam tripoli they all be talking about that shit even uh doesn't like tim Dillon sometimes oh yeah touch upon stuff like that he used to do that a lot more and then he just kind of like gave up on everything <laughs> he's well, like he just gave up on talking about the, you know, Tower 7 and the conspiracies. His, this is his, uh, I'm going to try to quote it exactly. This is his perspective now. He's like, look, every conspiracy we've ever known is out there. I've talked about it for years. And if you don't know about it now, you're probably better off not knowing about it. And if you want to know about it, you can go read about it because nothing new has transpired about any of these conspiracy theories. I was like, all right. Meaning there's no new information. Yeah, like, it's the same. Like, we know about the Gulf of Tonkin. We know about Operation Paperclip. We know about, you know, what we know so far about Tower 7 that we'll probably know anything else. We know about the LSD experiments. We know about, you know, Area 51. We know about Roswell. It's all there. But all we can do is just speculate and have fun with it, which I don't mind. Okay, well, maybe next time you can tell me about Operation Paperclip. Okay. Because I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> uh, you ain't heard of Operation Office Depot? <laughs> 
We got, uh, you know, it was Operation Stapler. That was a thing. Remember that time you went to uh, Home Depot and someone thought you were working there? Uh, you're like, is this what you're doing now? And I think you went to go buy something. No, no, it wasn't. They didn't think I was working at Home Depot. It was like, where was I? Oh, it was a tile. It was a floor decor type of place. Okay. I think I was buying a shitload of tile. I think it was when we were doing this floor. Flooring. Yeah, yeah. I think it was flooring. And um, they're just like, oh, hey, so like you're a contractor? Like, you're... <laughs> That's what it was, yeah. And it was like, no, 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 prop, props to them. I was like, no, this is from, you know, from my studio. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm in the game still. <laughs> you know, if you need a feature, I got you. I'm still in the game, boo-boo. Don't think I'm. But, I mean, shit, dude. Like, we were watching that uh, Galveston Fixer Upper show. I forget what it's called. Like Galveston Fixer Upper? Yeah, you haven't seen it? <laughs> no. Uh, what's the name of it, man? It's it's like they just go out to the island and fix up houses. I'll tell you right now. Oh it's my ba- god! No, it ain't nothing. Oh my god, about it. I'm into those shows, but okay. I'm saying like that we're out of ideas here. Let's no, just, no, no. It's, Fifth Ward Fixer Upper. You know they have that. No, I'm just oh, saying okay, that's what's okay. next. Nah. So look, this is what's interesting about it. So I mean, I guess you're looking at it like, okay, for one, bro, it's not called Fixer Upper. Okay. All right. There's home improvement shows. There's like a plethora of channels. You got the do-it-yourself network. You got um, home improvement. I mean, there's a shit ton of networks. Discovery has some. Anyway, so basically it's a show where it's a couple. And what they do is they buy up these old historic houses in historic Galveston, Texas, right? Which Galveston has its own interesting history. It does, yeah. The style of houses are very unique. So it makes for great television. Anyway, they go in there and they fix shit up. And I forget why I brought up the Galveston people. <laughs> I have no idea how we're sitting here talking about the Galveston people. You brought up the, the show, the Fixer Upper show in Galveston. Yeah, but, but why? Because <laughs> you said something before that. I didn't say sh- You randomly brought up this Galveston Fixer Upper show. It somehow was related to whatever. You talked about Tower 7, <laughs> Operation Paperclip. <laughs> And then after that, what did you say, Rob? I don't. I I was talking about that. We're talking about conspiracies and Hop Society and these these ideas for a new show. And you're like, yeah, like Galveston. Like, <laughs> you know, Galveston fixer upper. Okay, somehow, some way, it was related to something. Okay. And I don't know how. <laughs> See, we got to practice that memory recall. Yeah. Somehow, some way, it was related to whatever the fuck you were talking about. I cannot remember. <laughs> I have no idea what that has to do with anything. I'm like Joe Biden right now. <laughs> he totally just had a Biden moment. He wasn't asleep. He was resting his <laughs> eyes when uh, he met with the prime minister. Dejalo, he's sleepy. Okay, I don't know. What was I saying? We are talking about ideas. Why did Fixer Upper and Houses come up? I have no idea. All right. Um, uh, oh, people thought I was a contractor. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what it was. People, people were like, oh, so is this what you do now? But, but here's the thing, though. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No. Like, shit. I wouldn't, shit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, me and my wife, we talk about that shit all the time. Like, yo, man, we got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, where, what area? What next? You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you want to build from scratch, how does that work? Mm-hmm. Can you can you just make the foundation first? Like, can this be a work in progress? You're not having to go get no bank loans, nothing like that. You're just like, you know, throw as you go. Yeah, like okay, throw twenty grand. Like, does twenty grand cover a foundation? How deep of a foundation? How big of a building? How big? You know what I mean? Like, does that even cover it? Like, what does a foundation cost? And then it's like, can you then move on to the uh, the frame, or can you do foundation and frame and come back? Or you can't just leave it like that. We got to do plumbing, right? Because you, like, you, you lay down the plumbing and then the foundation around it. For plumbing all the pipes. and then the foundation around it. So what's first? Plumbing or the foundation? I believe it's got to be at the same time. Like you got to, okay. where's your restrooms and all the pipes going to be for all the different things that are going to come up from the foundation for the restroom, the toilet, the So sinks. they have to be like holes in the foundation? I mean, yeah, you got to get your piping if I'm not mistaken. And it has to come through the middle of the foundation. Yeah. yeah okay. So see, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you got to know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with... With knowing for being accused of knowing what you're doing at the time, Chingo took offense to it. He's like, "Ain't no goddamn contract." I was like, she, "Nah," because she made it seem like, "Oh, is this what you do now?" Like, "Oh, you," and I'm like, uh, "No, I'm a nationally touring comedian." And she's like, "Oh, well, you know what? We're hiring here, and we're very flexible with people's dreams." <laughs> and uh, you know, like Felipe, he does magic shows on the weekends. Sometimes we give him time off for that. <laughs> when building a house, what comes first? Preparing construction site to pour your foundation. And then a rough framing, and then your plumbing. Rough framing, framing, and then plumbing. Yeah, and then you probably got to do electrical yep. and all that type HVAC. of shit. 
Mm-hmm. And then what roof? Uh, I guess that would be part of the framing, right? Frame the roof too. And then install insulation and then the drywall and, and then the interior. And right. then you finish the exterior with brick or hardy plank or whatever the fuck you use, I guess. There you go. There you go. So shit is the good. The more you know. That's good shit to know. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Like the people that um, uh, painted like our kitchen and stuff like that, they've built shit from scratch like that for clients. Like out in... People go and get some land, and they mm-hmm. just want to build from scratch. And one time, they showed me some photos. A pretty decent house. And it's out, like, in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, okay. I'm thinking, well, shit, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, and, you know, it's decent, but it doesn't look like a fucking mansion, okay, well, what does something like that cost since you're out in the middle of nowhere? It was still, like, 500000 It was still something crazy. I'm like, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like, okay, I get it, but damn, it's not like you built that in the heart of the city where mm-hmm. it's gonna, like, man, your fucking lot of land alone is gonna be X amount. Threw me off. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was great going down memory lane, thinking about the 80s. Uh, Rob has homework to do. He's gonna go binge <laughs> some Airwolf, some Sidekick, all that shit. I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna figure out what was it about America? What was it about, like, our ability to create culture? Like, was it just more, like, free in terms of being able to just make stuff and get it out? Like, could Michael Jackson be a new artist in 2021? How hard of a time would he have? Would people appreciate his talent? You know what I'm saying? It's just... And let us know who is that Michael Jackson of today that we're missing here. Because we say Yeah, Peter. that too. Yeah, let us know. Who else is, like, a global icon that would ca- cause pandemonium? Right now, well, he caused pandemonium in the hood. He did them push-ups. <laughs> he started singing a little bit. That was hilarious. But, yo, you guys take care. See you on the road. we got El Paso coming up, Brea, California, Oxnard, and so much more. Hit up Chingobling.com and get you some merch and get you some tickets. But if I would believe it, we appreciate the love. Sass!